Define and overcome your fears of game devs. Tony Chan here, and welcome to episode 74 of Game Dev Loda, where I chat with the best people in our industry every Wednesday morning. If you need motivation and tactics for a successful gaming career, then this is the podcast for you. Now let's chat with today's future guest, Matthew Earl. Matthew, it is game time. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yes, he is the elite composer at Hexany Audio, which specializes in original music, sound, and voiceovers for games, VR, and interactive media. They have developed audio for both AAA and indie titles, such as Moonlight Blade, Iron Knight, King's Quest, and much more. So go ahead, Matthew, give us a bit about your personal life and how you got started in the game industry. Sure. Um, well, yeah, let's see. I, I, I've played video games like my whole life. It was, it was always a big game nerd and um let's see and and the, the other thing like on, on top of being a game nerd i was also a big music nerd I, I really loved music and really loved like rock music and stuff like that and I, I started playing the drums that led to to like piano learning guitar just started learning different instruments and i got really interested and then by the time i hit high school i was really really considering like like oh i would love to do game music i just I really didn't know how to get involved in the game industry and stuff like that, but that was always in my mind. Like that was my goal. I want to be a game composer. So then um, I, I started playing in bands and just learning, learning as much as I could about music. And uh, I started working at a local recording studio, working with different bands. So I built up a, like kind of a sound engineering background and just everything that had to do with audio. And then um, I guess how I got involved in, in, in video games was really my, my girlfriend uh, was going to school studying game art and her school was developing a video game. And, uh, she was like, well, you should do the music. And I'm like, okay, I'll do the music. <laughs> so I, 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 yeah, I did the music for the game and, uh, the game got, uh, nominated for some intercollegiate award thing. And at that, uh, ceremony, some of the people were saying like, Oh, Hey, I like the music and stuff. And then people came up to me afterwards and, and those people ended up being like my first game clients. And then her, her teacher referred me. So just kind of, friends and, and word of mouth and then I, I started eventually working at Hexany and then yeah and <laughs> so it was going through that that whole thing but yeah I did a little bit of sound design did a little bit of music and stuff but just the whole video game audio side I, I just love it all so awesome man and give us more details so you're the leading composer what what is it that you actually like like really do well yeah all I do now is pretty much music so I, I head up our music team and like so um, when, whenever we get a game and stuff I'll uh, I'll be writing pretty, like the majority of music. So we have another composer at, at our company named Jason Walsh, and he's like the electronic guy, and I am not the electronic guy. <laughs> so anytime anytime we need something that's like awesome electronic music, I'm like Jason, dude, do this, and then <laughs> and then he'll totally kill it, you know. So so, but I I, I focus mainly on orchestral and, and more acoustic music. I record a lot, so. Oh, I love orchestral music. Are you a big fan of Nintendo's uh, orchestral music, like in Super Mario Ga uh, Galaxy? Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, that's always amazing. Yeah, I love <laughs> All the old Nintendo games are big inspiration. So. <laughs> so what is something we probably don't know about composing a music that we should? Hmm, I, I guess, like, it, it's it's become, like, kind of a romanticized thing where people think it's all, like, you know, like, pen and paper to, like writing music stuff like that or, or or the other way around but it's it's all it's it's very very digital now it's a lot of like recording and multi-tracking and a lot of it ends up just being done by yourself a lot of the non non-music crowd knows that but uh, i guess of the of the music crowd a lot of people don't understand how important it is to know like uh like sound engineering and how to record yourself and actually have that sound great because that's that's all people end up really caring about in the end. They almost like don't even care about how great the music is. They care about how how great it sounds. So you need people need to be able to like produce something that sounds really professional. So yeah, you're you're absolutely right about that. Especially for podcasting, because podcasting is all audio, and having a song quality on point is it makes a huge difference. If like it could easily turn a person off and stop watching your show if your song quality is bad. Even if you have the best content out there, if that quality is bad, they're gonna stop listening to it. So yeah. I, Definitely understand where you're coming from from that. Of course. If you take Mozart's Requiem, which I, I consider like one of the greatest pieces of music, and you put it in just like general MIDI sounds and <laughs> you know, like no like it's it's no one's gonna listen to it. You know, that's the idea. Like So sound quality is definitely important. What are other common mistakes, even at a pro level, do you see people uh, doing? Um I guess uh over overscoring their games, as in like writing too much music and just never having a moment of rest 
because I, I think contrast, and that, I think that goes outside of music too, like having contrast and dynamics is really important in games to have, you know, r- moments of rest from overstimulation and then, then coming back. And, um, that, yeah, that goes with like dialogue too. Like I, I notice a lot of games, they, they try to force too much dialogue in too short amount of the time. But, but in video games, like a lot of it is the player just running around thinking and, and they need that rest. Oh, how, how would you balance that? Like, how would you know when to give that player? You know, you, of course, when you have a serious moment, that's when you, you probably put in that intense music. But how do you know when to balance it out, like to take it out so the players could think, like you said? Yeah, I, yeah like play testing things. And just uh, like, like when you get used to developing a game and you know all the secrets and like how to do everything, you just kind of bolt through it super fast. But you don't you don't think about like the the realistic play time. So like I kind of like to approach it from you're hearing it for the first time or something like that and it's like kind of you have to let things breathe and let things naturally happen instead of trying to force all of this creativity and all these cool things you're doing like right in the player's face you know you kind of have to let it develop over time interesting yeah overall scoring that's really interesting i I never heard anybody say that but yeah that makes perfect sense too much music or uh too much dialogue too it could uh, kill i guess the the mood or uh, kill the atmosphere or something like that Oh, it's just cause, yeah. I always joke about it too, because like I really love music, but I love silence just that much more. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yeah. Can you give us an example? It's like when a developer, you know, gives you a scenario or a scene where you have to uh, develop a music. Like, what's your process to develop that music? Um. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll go through and think about like uh, like different emotional key points, like. Um, just uh, like like is it is it like a lonely scene or romantic scene and things like that and and th- that'll kind of influence my my musical decisions and I'll usually go through and like play through it on piano like if it, if it's a cut scene I'll usually watch the video and like play piano at the same time and just kind of get the feel of like what it should be and then I'll usually record the piano just solid like that and then I'll record everything and orchestrate the rest of the music to that piano and the piano is usually gone by the end of it i just use it as like a, a placeholder to kind of you know set up the framework oh so you always, you always start off with the piano to come up with that startup music yeah like almost always i'd say 80 80 90 percent of the time it's it's usually starts with just piano and then i'll orchestrate to the piano oh interesting and a piano i guess is one of the main instruments for orchestra right well yeah and it's got it's got a huge range and you can you can get a lot of voices playing at the same time and I, I'm comfortable with it and it's very visual to see the music. And so, so yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just easier that way. If I, if I get the emotional arc done with piano and everything and then, then put the ideas after that. So overall, what are your key principles for like better music in video games, composing it effectively and, you know, just hitting that right tune. Yeah. Um, we, we, at our company, we've got six core values and the, the one that like, I've always really, really liked is, uh, is serve something bigger as in like the, the project of the game. Like, it's not about like, like the music. It's like, it's, you think about like, Oh, well, I want my music to stand out and be like really important, but it's like, it's absolutely not about that. You want it to serve the game. So, so like really just making sure the, the music supports the scene in the game or the, the emotions in the game and, and not, not the other way around. Yeah. It got the fit. You mind telling us the other uh, core values? Oh yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, serve something bigger. Uh, set the bar and jump over it. So like, um, <laughs> you know, like yeah, exactly. You're just trying to always progress in our mm-hmm. skills and stuff. Uh, lead with positivity. You know, we don't like to be jerks and and give off negative vibes and everything. Uh, work hard, play hard. I'm in Hawaii right now, so I'm getting the play hard right now. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we do what we say we're gonna do. We uh, that's a that's a big one. You know just always following up and making sure we're keeping our word and then bring unrelenting passion. Everybody that works at our company is like really, really dedicated to video game audio. And, and that's really cool to be able to work with people that really care about video games. So, Oh yeah. That's awesome. being around like many people that that's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. When do the developers come to you to start making the music? Like, is it like halfway through development or is it early on, like right from the get go? You know, it, it, it changes a lot, a lot of times. Like, uh, I like to be involved very, very early in the game, like as early as possible. I might not be even writing music at that point, but just thinking about it and receiving art and just being involved with, with hearing about how they're progressing with the game. It helps to get in the idea, the ideas and in the heads of the developers and stuff like that. But, but sometimes, you know, like 
music will be brought on last. Like it, at least for sound design, it's usually brought on the very, very last. But, but, um, but yeah, I mean that'll happen too. So it, it, it really depends. But I prefer to start early. Yeah, I noticed the composer. They always say it's always recommended to know the vision of the game early on, because uh, you know you just you get a better understanding of the game and you could create music better for it because you you just know you understand the vision of it. Yeah, of course, and, and 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 some things may change, and you know things take a while. So, like there, even if you if you get started really early, you may not even be working on things. You're just talking about it and hearing it. Maybe you'll write one piece of music, and then you'll take a like a break on that game for for a while, and then come back to it. Things like that, you know. But but definitely writing music up to <laughs> toward like the very end of the game that that definitely happens still. Ooh, gotcha, gotcha. Now, I'm pretty sure creating comp- music sometimes can be really difficult. I'm pretty sure you had some bad moments. What was the worst moment of your career? That one moment that's still vivid in your mind. Be very detailed and tell us that personal story. Hmm. Like the the worst moments. Like I, I like my uh, my career has not been that long, honestly. So it's like uh, I I, th- I think I've been pretty blessed in in the way things are, have been working. But um, but. I do remember feeling stuck, especially before I, I really started getting into into video games, because there was that thing where I used to be teaching music that full time, and that was my main source of income. I played in bands and and, and uh, taught music, and I, I kept thinking like it's like yeah, I want to be a like video game composer, like I really want that, but I like don't know how how to do that. And then like eventually, it was just kind of like a <laughs> well, I should just start doing it. <laughs> and so I, I, like, so I just I kind of started doing it and putting feelers out and talking to different people and then then my girlfriend was definitely pushing me there and was like oh you should put a portfolio together and and then I you know I did the the, the, the game for her school like I was telling you about and then started applying to different companies and, and stuff like that and once I just really was like oh well I should be a game composer that was <laughs> <laughs> it's like that was a big moment to where I was like okay yeah things are gonna be on an upturn I'm gonna start doing this you know. Before that, uh, that sequence, like, do you remember what kind of triggered that or what, what were you going through that finally triggered that? Like, uh, I, I, now I got to start doing something. Like, what triggered that? You know, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not terribly sure. Maybe it was like, I was getting really, really sick of teaching, to be honest. It was like, <laughs> I was, I was like, oh, I'm teaching other people to do what I really want to do, you know, like making music full time and doing that kind of stuff. So that, that was a contributing factor. And then you know, my girlfriend, she knew that, uh, that I really want to be a game composer and stuff. And she's like, well, you should, you should start putting a portfolio together and start sending it out and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll do just that. So yeah, I started, I started making demos of like type video game type music and things like that. So there you go. Game does. You, you just got to get started and, and do what Matthew did. He, he just got started a bit, that portfolio and just start sending it out there. Uh, what do you want to make sure game does a takeaway from that? Hmm, I guess. Yeah. That's like, I'm going to co- contradict that one a bit, but don't be too ready to send your stuff out to everybody because not everybody wants to hear it. it oh, okay. It's like, a, cause like, a, cause it's very easy to come across as like annoying sometimes, you know, like, like it's like running up to people and handing out business cards or, or running up to people and handing out my demo and be like, please like, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Like, like sometimes there's a place for that, but, mm-hmm. but often it's not like unsolicited, unsolicited demo handouts are, are usually not. <laughs> but if you, if you, but if you're talking to people and you're really building a relationship with different game developers and you're like, hey, like your game is just amazing. Like I would I would love to like to like work with you on this and stuff. And like maybe they reach out to you and ask like, oh, yeah, I'd love to hear your stuff. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, you need to have that stuff ready to go and be like, yeah, here boom, and like hand them over this like beautiful pre-created stuff that they have to listen to. So for people that's like, you know, they're just barely starting off. They, they want to get something going out there. So they should create a demo, and you say like, of course, you got to build up that relationship before you could just start spamming uh, your resume out there. What what steps should they take to ensure that they they could put themselves out there, you know, without feeling spammy, but I guess make themselves stand out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I guess because because the way the game industry tends to work is like it, it's just it's very personal. Like the people that work with other people are they they don't work with them necessarily because. They're greatly skilled. And well, I mean, obviously they do. They have to, people have to be skilled to be working, but that's not why people get, get work and, and people start working with each other. It's because they end up really liking that person. They're like, Hey, like I could, I could do some, some real work and do some overtime with this person. <laughs> so, so like, but, and 
they're, they're a killer, whatever, you know, a killer sound designer, killer composer. Like, yeah, I'm going to start working with that person. They seem really cool. So that's, that's a big thing. So just being at all the, the conferences and making friends and, but also being ready and being really skilled at your craft. So if somebody does ask like, Hey, I want to, I want to use you for something that you don't have to be like, Oh, well, let me think about it. Let me put it together. Like have all that stuff ready to go and be like, bam, this is what I do. <laughs> I like that. You, yeah. Be ready at all times. Yeah. What are bad recommendations do you hear in your profession when like, you know, uh, advices that other composers are giving other people? Like, do you hear any bad recommendations? Like almost all advice has validity, <laughs> like some degree, you know, like, it, like no matter what they say, you can, you can, you can come with that. I guess, um, a, a lot of people say like, like do it all, like, like, like do everything. And, um, I, I guess at least later don't do it all, but, but early in a, in a career, I do think it's actually somewhat good advice to be able to do everything and just see, we'll have your feelers out and stuff and whatever bites. But when you start your path in a career, you really kind of want to specialize doing something specific and like really hone your craft there. Cause you don't want to be beat out by somebody else. That's more talented in that specific thing because you decided to, to diversify or anything like that. So, but I, I do think it's in, in the beginning, it's important to, to diversify and have different skills and stuff. Yeah. I, I guess you, you kind of mentioned that earlier where, uh, you had, you want your coworkers, uh, focus on the electronic side while you focus on the orchestra side. So I yeah, guess it's yeah. good to have like specific areas where you uh, specialize in. Definitely. And then like with, with the sound design stuff, like I, I got really into sound design when I, when I was first starting, start, starting my career. And, uh, I thought that was really cool to know. And, and I initially did that because I was like, Oh, if I also know sound design, maybe I could get a job as a sound designer and stuff. And I, and I had in my mind like, Oh, well, if my career as a sound designer takes off, I'll just become a sound designer. And I'm like, if my career as a composer takes off, it'll do that. It started as I was kind of doing both, both sound design and music. And then eventually I, I decided to stick with music. It, it just was what I was better at. And I, I was able to focus more on that. So, and I, I think that's important to be able to fill yourself as a specialized skill. What are the uh, biggest waste of time do you see other composers are doing? Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not with those other composers. I can tell you the biggest waste of time for me, at least, is is, is like <laughs> cell phone, social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sitting on my cell phone too much. I mean, social media is really important though for for yourself. Um, I mean, yeah, like like some some meetings, I guess, like sitting around talking about doing stuff and not actually doing it. You know, like I, I, I've always said, people talk too much, but. No, you, but, you're right about that. <laughs> Cause, cause, yeah, because uh, I work in the oil and gas industry, and, and the meetings it just goes on and on. I was like, man, why am I here? And so, yeah, and I mean, it it is important, especially to like build the the personality, which I was saying, it's like really important to to really know the people you're with. But but yeah, I mean, it, when it gets to the point, I always I always say the joke that people like will just say words. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like exactly. there's no meaning behind the word; they just say words. So I. <laughs> I try to avoid that. And in regards to the social media, are you doing anything to, I guess, lessen the addiction? Because I, I, it, it, it's hard to get off of it sometimes, like Facebook or Twitter or, or Reddit and stuff like that. Like when you get those likes or you get those comments, you want to be on it to reply or you get, just get that satisfaction. Like, is there anything particular that you do to try to get off of it, I guess? Dude, I <laughs> no. I'm a full blown <laughs> addict, man. I'll, I'll sit, I'll sit and scroll through my no news feed for hours. And it's, it's kind of important. It's how I kind of stay connected with, with a lot of my friends and, and the, the game community in general. Like I couldn't even imagine I'm, like being away from it. I'm, I'm that, that addicted. <laughs> but, but yeah, but at least with, with work, like sometimes when I really have the stuff to get done, I'll just, I'll like turn off my phone, put it on the floor, like on the other side of the room, <laughs> like, so it doesn't distract me. Cause if I hear my phone vibrate, I'll have to pick it up and look at it. So I'll, I'll throw it away so I can focus on work sometimes. So. Yeah. 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 Removing that temp uh, temptation. Yeah. That, that's definitely working right <laughs> yeah. there. What have you changed your mind about in the last few years and why? Yeah. Cause I guess I've been, I've been doing like video game music and like doing the professional composure thing for about, about four years now. And I guess over that period of time, the role of music in video games has changed for me a little bit. Like, whereas I, I, I used to be really into the idea of music standing out and being the forefront. And I, and I still really enjoy it at times when it's like, there's a really great dichotomy between the scene and the music and stuff. 
but uh but just knowing the place of music and it, it it honestly for the most of the time belongs in the background and not getting in the way of the narrative of the game or anything like or the gameplay or anything like that it's it's to serve something bigger like i was saying before so do you see it uh music being any different in the future like do you see it evolving in any way i do i do a bit to at least in uh in the way music is scored it's it's getting very like interactive and which is awesome because that's what's so cool about games is that it's interactive there's always different things to do but uh like and the the very old video games had a lot of interactivity and then once things moved to like more like orchestral music it started to to die and stop being as interactive great music but wasn't as, as interactive as a lot of just loops and things like that but now as the technology's improving and stuff we are seeing a big big return to to great interactive music like dead space and journey and things like that to where it sounds like it was a movie that was scored even though it's a video game i think that's really cool oh yeah dead space that game was the the atmosphere that the sound and everything in that game it just felt amazing oh it's unreal that's dead yeah dead space all of them really i know a lot of people didn't like three but i especially liked three but two to like all those games <laughs> i love dead space they're some of my favorite games of all time yeah definitely definitely now, what was the one of the best investments you've ever made? And it could be investment of money, time, or energy. What was that investment? I guess, you know, let me think in the different categories. Of, of money, I would say um, just, I'm, I'm not a big gear guy, but but uh, but at least just getting stuff I need to make pro stuff, like a great mic, great computer, and great software and stuff like that. That's that's an important investment. I think my, my instruments that I've collected over the years, that that's like an invaluable investment. I love recording lots of different little things. Every time I get a new instrument, I feel like I'm able to create more things with it. And I, I really love that. Uh, like learning materials. I bought a lot of scores over the years and books and textbooks to learn music and, and stuff like that. I think that's really great. But I guess on the, on the time side, uh, meeting people and networking is, is super important. Like, like we were talking before we got on the call about GDC, like <laughs> GDC is just the, the best. Like, <laughs> that's the best thing. I recommend every single person goes to GDC just because the amount of people you meet and the knowledge you pick up is just really amazing. Oh, yes. The GDC, I I'm going. <laughs> yeah, it was cool because you invited me uh, to hang out with you. So I definitely got to take you up on that offer. And I got to go. Yeah, come hang out with me and Tony. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, come hang out with us. Uh, in, in regards to the resources, like, is there specific resource you use all the time like what books did you read or or what software are you using what mic I get, like what, give us some specific resources that we could use ourselves i mean there's a million answers to what could be used at a prof like everybody's got their own preferences like as, as for software i use pro tools which is actually a little weird in my industry a lot of people use other things like cubase nuendo logic reaper things like that but uh I just I've always liked Pro Tools and I feel like I'm pretty efficient with it, so that's what I use. So it's at, le at least making the investment to find out what you really like and what's really good good for you. I think is is important because yeah, like just different people work in different ways. Like a lot of people, they uh, they'll buy like a lot of different mics and hardware gear and stuff, and they and that for them that's how they achieve like really really great sound and things like that. And so everybody's just got to find their own way. Gotcha. I was saying, so yeah, find your own way. And a lot of things you can just try it out and send it back with like a 30 day guarantee. So it, I guess there's no, there's no big risk. <laughs> yeah. I, I have done some of that. I, I swear, especially with some like some, uh, hardware gear back in my engineering days, I'd, I'd buy compressors and send them back and then buy another one. But <laughs> there you go. It's a game yeah. That's what you can do <laughs> to save some money in case you don't like it. Uh, what was the greatest idea you had today? Like an aha moment. Yeah, it, it was funny. Like we were, we were talking earlier about just me, I, I just kind of decided to start doing, <laughs> like being a composer. You know, I was like, I always wanted to do it, but it's like, oh, well, just start doing it. I, I guess as, as far as music goes, like me composing music for games mm -hmm. uh, was to, to stop like worrying about specific uh, details like in, in the music. Like it's really easy to get caught up in like counterpoint and voice leading and stuff like that and be like, oh, well, am I following all these like theoretical rules and stuff? And uh, I did have like a little aha moment, maybe about like two years ago, three years ago, where I was just kind of like, it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's like you just have <laughs> to like make really bold moves and like just 
paint with a really heavy hand sometimes and just be like, yes, that's what's going to be here. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you know, and a lot of times that's what ends up coming out better than, than anything else, you know, just kind of these new brass strokes of, of ideas. How is it working with other developers when composing this music? Is it easy to communicate or do you usually work with a lot of different people in order to make the music happen? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, Every every client we work with works and communicates in a totally different way, and um, but but usually because we work as a company, we usually get get the request, and um, we'll discuss it amongst ourselves and like find out who's best to to tackle the project and stuff, and like different people have different ideas, and then we'll like usually assign the project to somebody, and, you know, and then um, we'll have some ideas, we'll we'll send them back. Well, usually before we even start writing, we'll send reference to the the developer. And to be like, hey, this is kind of what we were thinking for the idea of the music. And then they'll be like, oh, OK, uh, well, this is what we were thinking. And they'll send reference back or make comments on it. You know, so we both have an idea of what the music's going to sound like before we actually start writing, just so we're not wasting anybody's time and things like that. And then once we have an idea of kind of what it should be, we'll actually go down and, and start writing. We'll, we'll toss them some pieces and be like, hey, what do you think? They'll give us some feedback. And um, just usually as the game goes, the more. The, the more we're working together, the less revisions and stuff that needs to be happened because we're, we're on the same page, you know, at a certain point. So, Yeah, that's good. A lot of back and forth. Okay, that's really yeah. good. Now, the, you know, the game industry is, is booming. You know, we got the VR, you got the AR in. I'm, I'm assuming the, oh, yeah. the, the sound <laughs> is going to be really different uh, for those different type of uh, gameplays. What are you most excited about today? In, uh, in, in the, just from video games being awesome and, and killing it now. Oh, yeah. I mean, really that it that it just keeps going. Like I, I just, I games are so cool. And like, I, I do really like that games have become like mainstream. Like <laughs> I like the joke to where like, it used to be like people would call you like a gamer and that was like a nerdy <laughs> insult. And now people are like, no, no, I'm a real gamer. I'm not, I'm not a fake gamer. Like, you know, now that's an insult to call you a fake gamer. I think that's, that's pretty neat that it's becoming mainstream and, and video game music and video games are being held to the standard of like blockbuster movies nowadays. I find that super cool. Yeah. I, I think I remember hearing like even the, the selling million of, of copies is doing better than, than the movies now. Like the box office or the profit that games are making are slowly like overtaking the movies now. So that's insane. Yeah. That's way cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I really like games. So. Uh, yeah, I just hope it keeps going. What is that one game that influenced you the most and why? The one game. Man, <laughs> I don't know about that one game. Like maybe Legend of Zelda, but I feel like everybody says that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we were talking about Dead Space earlier. World of Warcraft was one that like especially made me want to be a game composer. I got super addicted to World of Warcraft in like my middle school years. And, and I was like, man, like I, this is just the ultimate music this is just like concert music in a video game i want to do this like, yeah halo journey i mean yeah there's just too many good games i can't even pick yeah one, there's so. so many did you saw so I'm, I'm assuming you play breath of the wild i haven't yet i what? you know oh. every yeah everybody at, at our company got nintendo switches and i still have yet to get mine so uh. <laughs> yeah breath of the wild and and the new mario game are, are especially new titles i want to i want to do so w when i do have time i'm going to pick up a switch and i want to play through them so oh yeah De i haven't played mario yet, but definitely legend is I, I, I was going to ask you because uh in breath of the wild they have points where it's just like silent it just you know you're you're right on a horse through like a grassy field and it just like a it's no music playing and I, people were complaining that there's not enough music or something like what do you think about that like they it's just a link you know going through a grass line is kind of like a s quiet yeah, I, I I appreciate that, and not enough music. Doesn't that game have like ten hours of music in it or something? Yeah, <laughs> something <so> outrageous. <laughs> so it, it's really it, it was really weird when I hear people complain like there's no music. It was just dry. People the link just were all cro uh, going across the field and there's just no music. So it was weird to hear that uh, sort of complaint. But oh I, yeah, I, I'll have to I'll have to yeah see that when I when I finally get around <laughs> to it. Uh, why do you love being a part of the video game industry? Man, video games are just cool. <laughs> <laughs> I I played video games for forever, like like probably since I was like I was five or something. My my parents bought me a Nintendo sixty four and were were <laughs> killing Rainbow Bowser with me, tossing them off. The floor. So, <laughs> like they're just super cool. Like and it, it's, I feel like it's a really big part of of me because I grew up with video games. So it's just like I don't know. I really appreciated it. So I 
being a part of that and being able to write music for these games. It's just really cool. Yeah, and it's crazy. You mentioned there are like games. I guess they're they have a more positive light now. Like back then, you know, people thought. I guess we we're weird or something. Gamers were weird or it was not cool. But now, yeah. like, now everybody's playing it and it's, yeah, it's mainstream and like kids, they, they have it on the phone and they play games all the time. So it, it's insane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the show isn't over yet. A game does. Before we go into the lightning round, if you enjoyed the episode and want to hear more inspiring stories, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Overcast. So, uh, Matthew, I will ask you quick questions and you'll be giving us a ton of valuable information in return. Are you ready to crush it and release the show? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. What was holding you back from joining the game industry? Um, I, yeah, we talked about this a little before. I guess me. <laughs> it was me, me not not really putting my foot down and like putting the initiative and being like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be a game composer. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? I guess fo- yeah, focusing on on my work. Like like I'll get like I talked about doing the phone thing. Like I, I seriously do that sometimes. I'll, I'll get in and I'll just turn off my phone and like set it on the couch in the back of my room or something like that and just sit down and just yeah, and, like laser beam <laughs> through work, you know, and just like having a good mood about like doing things, you know. I, I wonder if people like know how how much stuff you could get done by removing your phone away from you. Uh, you can get oh, so much out, done doing that. It's outrageous. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> we have like yeah like yeah we joke like my sometimes I'll just output like crazy amounts of work and it's just like yeah I just turn off my phone and just actually <laughs> do work. Like, that's, all, that's all you have to do. <laughs> uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Yeah, I, uh, me and my really good friend Sam Metter, we uh, we had a band. For, we still have a band. We've had it for years, and we always making music together and stuff. And we would always joke. I think he said it first, but it's fine. Like, <laughs> like we would get get to a point where we would overthink stuff, and then we'd just be like, you know, it, it's it's fine. <laughs> you know, like we don't. It's fine. Like just stop worrying about it. And you know, it, it almost always is fine. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- you, I believe you, you do have to change your perspective uh, on some things. And yeah, like you say, it's fine. Just release it and you can always, you know, update it or improve or just keep pushing forward. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Make something great. Make something you really think is great. But like at a certain point, like those little details you're obsessing over, no one, no one else cares about those. It's fine. <laughs> like, How has a, a failure set you up for a later success? Yeah, there's there's a lot of games... I guess that like there, there's certain things I'll look back and be like, oh, I wasn't happy with what I did here or um, or what I or yeah. So I guess learning from those and just being like, oh, I guess what I did here was not great. Not not obsessing over that, but just being like, oh, well, the next game. Yeah, that's <laughs> always know? the next just, game. Just learn learn from them. You know, it's like don't like failures aren't really like. Like that's such a crazy word because I can't really even like think of like a, a failure, you know. But I, I remember not being I remember not being totally satisfied with some of the work I've done. So I guess just learning from that. What's a, a great marketing tip to make yourself or and your game stand out? Yeah, I guess being bold. <laughs> people people like unique unique stuff, you know, like things that are like really pushing the envelope and being new, and not copying other things. But but the people also really like good things. So, yeah. so, you know, be unique, but also be good. Like, cause there's a lot of unique things, but not all of them are good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so be unique, but, but actually have it be a solid idea and polished. And Do you study the trends of music? Like, do you take influence from other, uh, type of music or, or I guess other mediums or some, something like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm always listening to game music, like other things that like my friends and other game composers and stuff are doing. It's, it's always really cool to hear. Um, I listen to, um, a lot of 20th century classical music, like late romantic music, but, but yeah, but into the, the popular music world, like metal, <laughs> I've mm. always been a big metal guy. I have my own metal band and stuff. I've always, always listened to metal. I freaking love metal, but yeah, but anything I'm doing that, that may be, may be unique. I'm all, I'm, yeah, I guess I'm always listening to weird stuff. Like this morning I was listening to the differences. There was a guy talking about the difference between Persian, uh, Turkish and Arabic music. And like the subtle differences of the microtones, like I guess things like that. It's always good to be listening to really weird, weird stuff to expand your ideas. Yeah, because you might you might take some influence for that. You never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if I need to do something that's like kind of a Middle Eastern themed game, and I need to know the difference between you know Iraqi and and, and Turkish music. <laughs> you know, like. Well, uh, 
if we want to become composers, what resources should we start using today? The internet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, the internet. I, I feel like a, like everything I learned was was through the internet, and then just books I've bought through the internet and things like that. So there's just an infinite amount of people and information there. So just be talking to people on the internet, watch every video of the subject you want to know about on the internet, and yeah, just can, can there's you, so much knowledge. Can you recommend like one book in particular that that you found the most helpful? One book. Um, at least for like everybody's going to find something that's like <laughs> more helpful for them. But at least for me, I thought the art of counterpoint was a really breakthrough book <laughs> for, for me for learning uh, species counterpoint and, and voice leading and stuff like that. I, <laughs> that. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. I definitely, <laughs> I'm going to link that up. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a music nerd book. So don't beat <laughs> yourself up about it. If you don't read it, it's, but it's very cool for if you want to be a composer and learn more about counterpoint. So. Uh, this next question is a bit of a doozy, so uh, take your time if you need to. Imagine you woke up the next morning in a brand new world and you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have today. Your food and shelter is taken care of and you have a laptop. What would you do step by step on a path to join and become successful in the game industry? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. Start from the beginning to the end. Like, what would you do step by step? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I guess I would take that laptop. I still, I have my money. Is, is that good? Do I still have my resources? You said it, like everything's taken away, but then, cause it is important. Like I would need to buy some new gear. I don't <laughs> think that laptop would be good enough. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I guess, yeah, <laughs> you have money. You got money. <laughs> cool. Cool. I would probably buy a new computer would be the first thing. Because I, I I need something a little more powerful to run to run my software and stuff. I would create what I used to create. Definitely, I would get a lot of my music together, start to put together things that I think sound great. I would use that if I still have that laptop and I didn't sell that laptop. I use that laptop to look up <laughs> look up uh, um, Gabe Dev Hangouts and stuff like that. Find out where they moved GDC to since the apocalypse, <laughs> and <laughs> and try to save up money and. And try to attend GDC and just start to get back into it and meeting people and trying to create friendships. And then um, if, if those friendships turn into working, like working relationships, then, you know, share them with this music that I created and be like, hey, like it'd be awesome to work together. Like, let's let's make this happen. So <laughs> I guess that would be that would be there. But, yeah. I like that because, yeah, you got to build a relationship first before you could you know just start putting your stuff out there. Oh no! Sorry, absolutely, and and I, I, you've been to GDC before, right? No, no. This, this is gonna be my first one. Oh, awesome! Yeah, GDC is the best. But but like, yeah, there's a ton of people. You'll see they're really eager and they really want to get involved with uh, with people, which is great. But you see them they're a little too eager, you know, and they're running around and <laughs> they're just like, "Hey, I'm a, I'm a composer, like here," and they'll like just pass out like copies of their CDs to like ten people in a group and like shoot out their business cards like a machine gun. You know, and it's like, it's like, that's not, that's not super attractive. That's not who people want to work with. Like, like find, find some people that like you think are really cool and they'll probably think you're really cool. And then you can talk with them and, and build relationships. Nice. Nice. Well, we have reached the end. Go ahead and give us a one last, a party piece of guidance in how we can connect with you. And then we'll say goodbye. A piece of guidance and how you can connect with me. Well, yeah, you can connect with me everywhere, I guess. Facebook is what I use most often. My full name is Matthew Carl Earl, Carl with a C. So yeah, if, if you want to add me there, ask me questions or whatever, go to, go to GDC for sure. Meet me there. If you see my big hair, just, <laughs> just stop me and be like, Hey, I heard you on the podcast. Like, let's, let's, let's hang out and be like, yeah, let's hang out. Um, hexanyaudio.com is our company's website. You can find more info there and contact information and stuff like that. So. Guys, he, he invited you to GDC to hang out with them. So definitely take up on that uh, offer. I'm going to be there too. I'm going to make a huge effort to make sure I, I, I be there. Matthew, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. For that, we are truly grateful and we will catch you in next time. Oh, of course. And yeah, let me, let me give my email real quick. I forgot if you guys want to ask me any questions or anything. It's um, M E A R L, so M Earl, at hexanyaudio.com. Guys, he, he just gave me a personal email. Yeah, you definitely got to hit him up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for having me. This was fun. Definitely. 
Thank you, Game Devs, for listening. I really appreciate your time, and I'm hoping you're having a great holiday. Go to GameDevLoadout.com and type in the number 74 in the search bar to find Matthew episode for all the awesome show notes. Until then, I keep on making great games. I'm Tony Chan, and I'll catch you next Wednesday on the Game Dev Loadout podcast. Peace.